Hello fellow book nerds and welcome back to my channel and welcome me back to my own channel because it has been a hot minute since I filmed anything or uploaded and I'm kind of embarrassed about that and ashamed of myself because how do you get a channel started and then just fall off the face of the earth? I mean, I know it happens to everybody, life happens and as you can see from the background of my videos, if you've seen any of my videos before, just even my thumbnails, it looks different. No, I did not redecorate, I moved new zip code, new city, new state, new kind of part of the country. I mean, yeah, new part of the country. So every my life changed in a big way about four months ago, probably, let's just say that. Back in May, I picked up and I moved to Nashville, which is where I am now. And I kind of hit a snag for a little while because I had a hard time, I had a hard time adjusting more so than I thought I would. I was prepared for this move. I moved to a new a place where I didn't know anybody. I do have roommates, but I didn't know them prior to literally the day I moved in. Met them kind of online. And uh, I knew it would be hard. I never lived on my own before. I never went to college. I never, I literally never left my house. Well, almost literally never, but like I never lived anywhere outside of my house. So this was a major adjustment for me. I don't have anybody within driving driving distance. I mean, I know everyone's a phone call away, but it's not the same when they're not there and I've been used to having people there my entire life. But let's get to what today is supposed to be about, which is a book review. And sorry for that little rant. I mean, you might not care, you might care. It just felt good to kind of talk about it with even just strangers instead of just people in my life because everyone in my life has been saying, like, you're so brave to be moving by yourself. and. It doesn't feel like that to me. I'm like, people do this every day, all the time. People move, people who have no place to go pick up and leave, or people who leave a bad situation and move by themselves. I don't have it that bad. I just picked up and moved and went by myself to a place I don't have anyone. It's really not that big of a deal in my mind. But at the same time, I don't think I need to downplay the emotions I still went through and still I am going through of, it is lonely. And I feel like as adults, we're not, we don't really, you don't hear people talk about it that much when you move cities because it's like you're an adult. Go get a job, meet people through your job, join a club, join, jo join a gym, do this, do that. And it's not that easy. It's really not, especially when you're someone like me who's not big on the bar scene or going out. If you have moved or you're in the middle of doing a move and you're going someplace where you don't know anybody, all I can say is just... It's, it is tough, it will be rough, you'll have your moments. I'm still having mine. And don't freak out if you don't, it takes a while to meet people. Cause put it, I'm still trying to get to that and it's been four months, and, but I'm still, I have my moments where I freak out and sometimes I'm like, you know what? You'll meet people when the time is right, when the right situation will come up. But yeah. <laughs> but anyway, off my soapbox, and let's get to the book review because I'm sure that's why you're here. And if you fast forwarded just so you can hear the book review and you skipped all that front little part, that's okay. I don't mind. So today we are talking about Pretty Reckless by LJ Shen. And yes, she is my favorite author. And I will point that out every single time I review one of her books. So I don't care if I sound repetitive. I will point it out every single time that she is my number one. And this series is a spinoff of the Sinners of Saints series, which I already did do a review for. And I'll, if you haven't seen it, I will put it in the link below. And this is the children of those guys from that series. So this one is Daria's book, and she is the daughter of Jamie and Melody, who were Defy in, which is technically the second book of the Sinners of Saints series. So if you want more of a better understanding of the character of Daria, and where she came from and her parents, I would read this first and then go and read Pretty Reckless. But if you want the full experience of the full world, because there are cameos by numerous other characters and their kids in this, then I would read the entire Sinners of Saints series and then get into this series, because this, this one is still being made. Why does my camera keep turning? Okay. And then get into the series. So this book is on Kindle Unlimited. And it is technically a standalone because it is also book one of a of the new series. But as I said before, I would honestly suggest reading all of the parents' book first, so the Sinners of Saints series, and then dive into this. But if you did, if you wanted to read this one first and then go back to the parent series, you can do that too. Would I read this again? One hundred percent. I will eventually. I mean, it's still too new. I never read books a second time the same year they came out because too soon. 
So this book is about Daria, and Daria is the daughter of Jamie and Melody, who had the student-teacher relationship in Sinners of Saint. And Daria is the queen bee of her school. She's the bitchy one, the snobby one, the cheerleader. And her leading man is Penn, who is the quarterback of the rival school. So in this story, Penn moves in with the Follow Hills as a foster child for his senior year, but he still goes to the rival school. And it's not as much of a bully romance as much as it is Penn really dislikes Daria just for what she stands for and how fake she essentially is. And he's more of trying to take the queen bee down a notch and just overall takes his anger out on her because his sister is missing and he doesn't know what happened to her. Now, Daria, I really, really loved reading about her. By the way, I keep having to adjust my camera. So if you, the angles keep changing, no, you're not going crazy. I keep moving my camera. I'm still getting used to how to film and where to film and what angle to choose, what angle to shoot at. So Daria, I really loved reading her perspective throughout the entire book. I'd say 95% of the time when I read a book, I want or I enjoy the most reading the guy, the main guy's point of view. I don't know, I think most of us do feel the same way. I don't know if it's because we like reading inside a male's head which is funny because it tends to be female authors writing about men. So it's like we're technically still reading a female's mind, but it's a perspective of a male's brain. So we, I love reading the male's point of view, but in this book, as much as I did love reading Penn's side, I love Daria's the most because she gave us a perspective that we don't typically get. And that's the queen bee slash, she's kind of the bully to other people getting their side of the story of, why they are the way they are, why they treat people the way they do, why they act the way they do. And in Daria's case, it is pressure of the environment to be the queen bee, but it mostly stems down to her relationship with her mother. And that was something I really, really loved reading and how LJ Shen wrote it in the book. Because it's, it's typical and normal to read the stories where the mother and daughter don't get along. The mother, you know, treats the daughter like crap for whatever reason. And the daughter hates the mother. And that can almost in some ways be a little easier to write because it's you just go with the reaction of hate. But with this, Daria and Melody's relationship, it's not hate. It's two people who love each other very much but have lost each other in the last few years because Melody, even though she's the mother, she's the adult, she doesn't know how to handle her own daughter or what to do to help her and save her and reconnect with her. She's just as lost. And Daria is, she is still a child. She's a teenager. She kind of, with the pressure of being a teenager, she reacts kind of the only way a teenager could and, you know, just fires back at her mother. And the way LJ Shen wrote it was really perfect because I know from what I've seen other people say from the Sinners and Saints series, Melody was the least liked heroine and it wasn't that we did dislike her because she was for me too. She just was the one I liked the least. So throughout most of this book, I could not get on board with her as a mother or her as a character because she did make some questionable choices. She did do some things I was not a fan of because I was more teen Daria reading it. But as it comes together and they finally figure out their mother-daughter relationship and Melody kind of starts explaining herself and you get it was everything she does throughout the book it really is out of love the relationship that happens between mother and daughter in this book which is so prominent because of how it affects Daria throughout her entire life I think it can be is more relatable to what a lot of readers probably went through and could connect with like all LJ Shen books, there are twists and turns and there is the one that probably got me the most was with the principal and I definitely did not see that one coming. And then there was one with Penn and I was like 50-50 on that one. So two negatives with this. The second one I am being a little nitpicky about, but the first one, I will say when reading this after finishing it, it felt a little bit more like a young adult novel than the typical LJ Shen book. It still did have, you know, like the sexual innuendos and there were some sex scenes, but they weren't as detailed as what I've come to read from her. Not saying that's why I read her, like they have to be in there. Just the book overall felt a little more on the young adult side than the others. 
but it doesn't change the fact that the story is still amazing. And the only other thing that's just a little nitpicky, I would have wanted a little bit more positive Pen and Daria interactions. I felt it was the majority of it was a lot more heated and angry or like lying to yourself about how you really feel about the person. Cause it felt a little like it jumped from they were still calling themselves enemies to she was telling him he loves her. She, lo she was telling him she loves him. Kind of, so like it was like that little window. I'm like, ah, I would have liked a little bit more positive interaction. But other than that, the book is amazing. It's absolutely fabulous. And her writing is always flawless and no one can tell a story like LJ Shen. So I would 100% get in it and reading this. So as I normally like to do, if you do not like spoilers, this is where you are to click out of the video. If you've read the book or you haven't, but you'd like spoilers, because I actually like spoilers before even reading a new book. It doesn't ruin the book for me. I just choose how much I want to know or I don't do it for every book, but I'm a spoiler person, which is why I do this. Then you can continue because I'm coming into the spoiler section. Again, if you do not like spoilers, you don't want anything spoiled, stay out and I'll see you on the next video. But anywhere, everyone else, let's continue. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the principal situation. Because, I mean, it was pretty obvious it wasn't going to be she's sleeping with the principal because she saved herself for Penn. And I, you kind of had that feeling. So it's like, what else is she doing? I went through all the scenarios in my head and I could not come up with one that sounded plausible. So when it's revealed what her punishment is with the principal and what he makes her do every time she does something bad, with like, was it M&M's? Was it Skittles? Does it really make a difference? I can't remember. Again, I read this in April, so my brain's a little fuzzy on it. But I was like, really? Like that, that, that was it. I was so surprised. But it doesn't surprise me that he made a pass at her toward the end and it's like showed his true colors. So as always, thank you for watching. And I feel like as I've done this video, I've shifted more and more and more to my left. I feel like I started over here and now I'm all the way over here because this camera keeps moving, but oh well, I don't know what's going on. So I'm still trying to get this, trying to figure this all out, but I'm glad to be back. I'm, good, I'm hoping to have again, a little, a bit of more of a steady filming schedule. It won't, I won't be able to probably do one, one a week, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Once it hits November, I know my work will slow down a little bit. I'll have less hours. So I'll be able to film a little bit more, but up until then, I'm just gonna do the best I can because I do have some really great books I want to review like Broken Night. And especially the series I'm reading right now, I'll give you a clue, B-O-B-H. <laughs> and it's amazing. So if, if, you, you, if you know what that stands for, then you're probably like, oh my God, yes. Because <laughs> it's that series so far is everything. It might be the biggest book series of the year. So a, lots, a lot of good things to come. But for right now, that's the end of this video. And I will see you guys later in my next video and happy reading. Bye. Oh wait, I can end it right here.